Hey there, ever wondered if there's more to life than what meets the eye? It's a journey that could change everything. Sadhguru's got something mind-blowing for you, a dimension beyond the physical. Picture this, diving deep into the unseen realms of existence, where your wildest dreams and deepest truths converge. So, why not stick around? Let's explore together and uncover the extraordinary in the ordinary. The basis of… or the very fundamentals of a spiritual longing is to transcend the limitations of the physical. The most intimate part of physical creation for an individual being is his own body. The limitations of the body and the possibilities of the body. To explore the possibilities and to go beyond its limitations. The physical body, which is designed and structured to function by itself without much of your participation, you know. This body is designed in such a way that it functions by itself. You don't have to make the heart beat, you don't have to make the liver do all its complex chemistry, you don't have to breathe. Everything that is needed for the physical process to happen, for your physical existence to manifest itself in a proper way is happening by itself. So the physical body is a very self-contained, quite a complete instrument as, in, as instruments go. It's quite a complete instrument. And if you keep it well, you may go through your whole life without ever having a spiritual longing. It's possible because it's so complete by itself in its own nature. If you're fascinated by gadgets, there is no be better gadget. Every little thing you explore in this body is quite incredible. It takes a certain amount of intelligence and awareness for a person to see the limitations of this fantastic gadget that it is. Gadgetry is fine, sophistication of mechanism is fine, but still it doesn't take you anywhere. Just springs out of earth and gets you back to earth. Isn't it enough? If you look at it from the perspective of the body, it's quite enough. But a dimension beyond the physical somehow got trapped in this physical, somehow was infused into this physical, without which there is no life. Life is one thing, but the source of life is another thing. In every creature, in every plant, in every seed, in every animal, in every bird and worm, the source of life is functioning. It is just that in a human being, it is functioning with little more presence. A dog also has the same source of life within him, a worm also has the same source of life within him, but it's not so manifest in them, it doesn't have a strong presence there. Here, it has a stronger presence. Because of that, all the trouble started. Because of that, we had to <laughs> devise this impossible yogas, you know. We have to do all kinds of things because the source of life has a larger presence in the human being compared to any other creature on this planet. If it had a low profile, 
the source of life or the creator or the divine, if it had a low profile presence in you as it is in other creatures, you wouldn't be in this ashram today. Yes because he's taken on a little high-profile presence. Because of that, suddenly all the simple things or even wonderful things that the physical offers somehow becomes irrelevant. Because the fragrance of that which is the source of creation is such, once you get a whiff of that, the fragrance of the physical doesn't appeal. So, because of this one aspect, a human being is a constant turmoil. To enter a dimension beyond the physical, one must open up a perception beyond the five senses. This idea, put forth by Sadhguru, challenges the conventional understanding of reality. It suggests that there is more to existence than what can be seen, heard, touched, tasted, and smelled. The concept of opening up a perception beyond the five senses is intriguing. It implies that there are hidden layers of reality waiting to be discovered. It suggests that our current understanding of the world is limited by our reliance on the physical senses. But how does one go about opening up this perception beyond the five senses? Sadhguru does not provide a clear answer. Perhaps it involves meditation, introspection, or some other form of spiritual practice. Whatever the method, it seems clear that it requires a shift in consciousness, a willingness to explore the unknown. For those who are curious about the nature of reality, Sadhguru's words offer a tantalizing possibility. They suggest that there is more to life than meets the eye, that there are mysteries waiting to be uncovered. Whether one chooses to pursue this path of exploration is up to them. A human being is a constant struggle between the physical and that which is beyond the physical. This is the only thing which is setting him apart. This is the only thing which is making him, though he is also physical, in contradiction with the physical, Though he also has the compulsiveness of the physical, he has the consciousness of not being physical. So, all of yoga, every kind of spirituality that you can find, I refer to it as yoga because it is all different types of yoga, either done systematically or blindly, but still it is yoga. Any method that you employ to enhance the presence of the non-physical within you, any method you employ to heighten the presence of that which is the source of creation within you is yoga. How you do it, either by using the body or your intelligence, or your emotion, or using the fundamental life energy, it doesn't matter how you do it. Whatever you do, you only do with these four wings of who you are, for these four dimensions of who you are. So everything that you do to enhance the dimension beyond the physical is referred to as yoga. So all these yogas became necessary because of this fundamental conflict or a seeming conflict, I wouldn't really call it a conflict, it seems like a conflict between the instinct of self-preservation and the longing to become boundless. These two forces are not against each other, but when you look at it from a physical perspective, when your whole perception is limited to the physical, they seem to be in conflict, but they are not really in conflict. One belongs to the physical, another belongs to a dimension beyond the physical. If one has the necessary awareness to separate the two, then there is no conflict. 
But if one does not have this awareness, if he is identified with the physical, then there seems to be a conflict between these two fundamental forces which make a human being what he is right now. If you go by the ways of the body, it knows only self-preservation and procreation. It's incapable of anything else. These two are the only two aspects of the body. If you go by the dimension beyond that, the longing to become boundless. Unfortunately, most of the time, trying to find physical expression to this longing to become boundless leads a man into all kinds of activity, insatiable activity. Even if somebody's body is aching, you can't make them sit. Do you see? You went to Himalayas? Your body is aching enough, it says. But no, you must go to the top of the mountain and come because you want to be little more than who you are all the time. You always want to be little more than who you are. This longing is a never-ending longing. This, this longing is not seeking for little more. It is seeking for an ultimate expansion. So these two aspects become a conflict because of a strong identification with the physical. Once you get deeply identified with the physical, then these two fundamental forces, one which helps you to root yourself well on this planet, another which is supposed to take you beyond. Unfortunately, instead of working in collaboration, they become a conflict. All the struggles of humanity in terms of should I be spiritual or materialistic is just coming from this ignorance. Sadhguru, uh, how come like a boy with six years old, he can remember his last life, he can, he can tell who he, who he is, who is his parent, and sometimes he can tell who killed him, where and how. And after a time, he can forget everything. Yes, how come he can remember? He should not remember. Nature has given you this cocoon of life so that you do not remember. It has given you a protective wall so that you do not remember. Because if you remember, you will become a far bigger mess than you are right now. See, these few years of living here, ten, twenty, thirty, sixty years of living here, people are just struggling with the memories of their life, isn't it? Yes, people have great struggles with these few years of memories. Suppose a few lifetimes of memory opened up, you know what a turmoil and struggle it would cause within you? Just being here, you're still struggling with relationships. You're still not able to forget what happened yesterday, what may happen tomorrow, all these struggles are going on. Have you ever pondered about what lies beyond the physical realm of our existence? In our day-to-day -day lives, we often find ourselves caught between the tangible world and a yearning for something more profound. This inner conflict is a universal human experience, but what if there's a path that leads beyond this dichotomy? Enter the world of Sadhguru, a profound mystic and visionary who propounds a dimension beyond the physical. His teachings delve into the deepest corners of our existence, shedding light on the compulsions and limitations of our body, mind and emotions while also illuminating the potential for transcendence. Sadhguru invites us to embark on a journey of self-discovery, to unravel the mysteries of our own existence, to explore the very nature of our being. It's a voyage not outside but within. It's not about acquiring, but about realizing. It's a journey of self-discovery, a quest for the truth beyond the physical. Can mindfulness practices serve as a bridge to this spiritual dimension? This question may have crossed your mind as you explore the realm of alternative healing. Mindfulness, in essence, 
is the practice of becoming intensely aware of what we're sensing and feeling in the moment without interpretation or judgment. It's about embracing the present, quieting the mind and transcending the limitations of our physical realities. Sadhguru, a profound mystic and visionary, teaches that through mindfulness, we can tap into a dimension beyond the physical. He guides us to understand that our thoughts and emotions are not absolute. And through mindfulness, we can experience a profound sense of liberation from these transient states. This liberation, according to Sadhguru, is a gateway to a dimension beyond our physical existence. So as we delve deeper into the world of alternative healing, let's remember, mindfulness is not just a practice, but a pathway to a dimension beyond the physical. What if wellness is not just about the body, but also about the mind and spirit? Holistic wellness, as the name suggests, is a comprehensive approach to health and well-being. It doesn't just focus on physical health, but also delves deep into mental well-being and spiritual growth. Imagine a triangle, where each point represents the body, mind and spirit. Holistic wellness is about maintaining a balance among these three aspects. It's about understanding that our physical health is intricately linked to our mental state and our spiritual well-being. In line with this, Sadhguru, a spiritual master with a deep understanding of life and the human mechanism, emphasizes the need to transcend the physical. He teaches that while our bodies are important, they are just one aspect of our existence. To truly experience wellness, Sadhguru urges us to connect with the deeper dimensions of life beyond the physical. It's like peeling an onion. The outer layers represent our physical bodies. The layers beneath symbolize our mental and emotional states and at the core lies our spirit. Holistic wellness is about reaching that core, nurturing it and allowing it to shine through. So, the next time you think about wellness, remember the triangle. Remember that true health is not just about the absence of illness, but also the presence of inner peace and spiritual fulfillment. Holistic wellness is about harmonizing the body, mind and spirit, journeying beyond physical existence. Are you ready to embark on this journey to a dimension beyond the physical? As we continue our voyage through life, we've explored the profound teachings of Sadhguru, delving into the power of mindfulness, the holistic approach to wellness, and the quest to transcend the physical. We've shed light on the conflict within us, the tug of war between our earthly compulsions and the yearning to transcend them. We've discovered mindfulness, a practice that tethers us to the present moment, allowing us to experience life in its purest form. We've explored the holistic approach to wellness, an approach that nurtures not just the body but the mind and spirit as well. These practices are not just theoretical concepts to be discussed but practical tools to be incorporated into our daily lives. They are pathways that lead us beyond the physical into a realm where we are not bound by the limitations of our body and mind. So, I encourage you all to imbibe these teachings to take that first step on this journey. And remember, this journey isn't one that takes you across continents or galaxies. It's a journey that takes you within, to the very core of who you are. As Sadhguru often says, the only way out is in. So, delve within, explore the depth of your being, and discover the boundless potential that lies there. Remember, the journey to a dimension beyond the physical is a journey within. It's a journey of self-discovery. A journey to the very core of who we are. Suppose you realized, let's say you remembered your past lives and you realized that uh, your dear son happens to be your neighbor's pet dog. Suppose, I'm just saying. That these days dogs are having a better life than us, yes? You know what a havoc it would cause in your life and in your neighbor's life and in the dog's life. It wouldn't be good for anybody, isn't it? Unless you're in such a state of understanding and dispassion, that even if you come to know this was your wife or your mother or your father or your dearest friend, you can still continue without even looking at them, then it's okay to know. But if you're somebody who has emotions for everything that you think belo that belongs to you, see this is a problem. 
people's emotions are coming only towards those things which you… which they call as theirs. Suppose let's say you have never met uh, your father or you have not seen your mother since you were born or you had not seen your twin brother or a brother or a sister in your whole life. Today I showed you, see this is your mother. You have never seen her, you have nothing to do with her. But now because somebody told you this is your mother, the moment you say, oh she is my mother, suddenly emotions burst out. From where? You don't… you have not built a relationship with this person, you have nothing to do with this person just because somebody says, this is yours. When somebody says, this is your mother, somebody is saying, this person belongs to you, isn't it? So your emotions flare up only to those things which you consider as mine. So you have… if you have this problem that everything has to be yours, only then it'll happen, then I would say, get little more greedy, make everything yours. Why be stingy on your greediness? Take it all the way. You… my children, I have tremendous feeling, make everybody yours, what's the problem? Somebody there to stop you? <laughs> Is somebody there to stop you? If that's your way, take it all the way. Or nobody is yours, that is also fine. It's a harder way, but that is also fine. Nobody is mine, is fine. Everybody is mine, is fine. This is mine, that is not mine, this is a problem. So, if you remember past lives and you are in, st in this state that this is mine and this is not mine, then you are going to get into lots of trouble too much trouble, more than you can handle. If you have reached a point, everything is yours or nothing is yours, then it's okay to remember, then it will be useful to remember. So a six-year-old boy just by chance remembered something. It's just a, sometimes the systems in the nature fail, you know. Some data input mistake. It happens. Such a complex structure, sometimes, you know, it happens. <laughs> Little bit of mistake, the necessary protection was not created in a particular child. Even if they do, usually before they grow up, they, then, they tend to forget. Lot of children below four years of age clearly remember their past, but by the time they become four years of age, it all dies out. After four years of age, they get involved in this life, whatever is around them. Till their four years of age, it is possible in their minds the past could be just going on. I don't know if you're aware of this in India, for a variety of reasons they said this. They say, till the child is four years of age, he belongs to God. Only after that, he belongs to you. <laughs> because they're saying, because he's running with so many memories, he doesn't belong to anybody at that time. After that, when his, once his memory goes off, he starts relating to everything around him in a deeper way. That's when he begins to belong to you, at least he gives you an illusion that he belongs to you. Yes, they'll break it after some time. <laughs> they do, isn't it? One way or the other they do. <laughs> so, it could happen, it's happened many times, but generally such people forget after some time that… that capability, that kind of Aberration, I would say, happens only at a certain phase of childhood, after that it dies by itself. Sadhguru, at the beginning today you said that 
the human is one where uh, the source of creation has a greater presence. Now why does it have to be so? Is it just nature's ploy, existence ploy, a play where we are all just some kind of software programs designed for self-annihilation with some support systems? Why some people have the longing, some people don't? And why some people with longing find the right place or the right avenues to get their longings fulfilled? What is the secret behind all this? For the first part of the question, why are you asking me? I didn't create this damn place. I am only trying to create a solution. <laughs> I didn't create the problem. <laughs> so, is this all apply for people, the spiritual people to run their business? Do they have some kind of a deal with the creator that he keeps people in such a turmoil that these people can run their show. Possible. Sadhguru, that is not the question, Sadhguru. I know the question. <laughs> It's just that uh, you are asking this with a certain anguish attached to it. So I'm just trying to play it a little bit. You know the cat and the mouse game? They say, Illegal prana sangata bekkaki chellata. What it means is, for the rat, it's a life and death question. For the cat, it's a game. <laughs> so, <laughs> it all depends which one you are. So, why this whole thing is made like this? Is it some kind of a conspiracy between the spiritual gurus and the creator? No. It's all conspiracy from the other side. We are trying to beat the conspiracy. You don't have it. What if I told you there is more to this life than what meets the eye? Imagine for a moment stepping outside the physical confines of your existence into an unseen dimension, a dimension that, according to Sadhguru, holds the very essence of our being. Life, as we know it, is not merely limited to our physical reality. It is a profound mix of the seen and the unseen. It is in this unseen dimension where our true self resides the self that is often forgotten in the hustle and bustle of our physical world. Sadhguru's insights highlight the transformative power of understanding this unseen dimension. It is not about escaping our physical reality, but about enriching it. It is about discovering a deeper connection with ourselves and the universe around us. So, the unseen dimension, it's not a fantasy, it's a reality that we often overlook. Have you ever questioned the very nature of your perception? This question posed by Sadhguru invites us to delve deeper into the realm of our understanding. He shares a compelling narrative, illustrating how our perceptions, limited and often distorted by our physical senses, shape our reality. Imagine being in a forest, hearing a rustle in the leaves. Your mind might instantly perceive it as a threat, perhaps a snake, but it could just as easily be the wind. Our senses, while necessary for survival, often amplify fear and uncertainty limiting our experience of life, Sadhguru encourages us to expand our perception, to step beyond the physical senses and embrace the unseen dimension. This isn't about disregarding our senses, but rather it's about enriching our understanding of the world. In doing so, we open ourselves to a more profound, more holistic experience of life, one that encompasses not just the seen but also the unseen. As Sadhguru puts it, 
Our perception is but a speck in the vast cosmos. It's time we broaden our horizon. Ready to explore more of the unseen? We've just begun to scratch the surface of the profound insights offered by Sadhguru. Our next video will take us deeper into the unseen dimension. We'll delve into the realm of intuition, inner wisdom and the vast expanse of consciousness that lies beyond physical perception. It's a journey to the very core of our being. A journey of self-discovery and an exploration of the unknown. So stay tuned. You won't want to miss what's coming next. Remember, we are not just physical entities. We are so much more. We are energy. We are consciousness. We are part of an infinite universe. As we journey together in this exploration, let's strive to embrace the unseen, the unknown, and the limitless potential within us. Let's awaken the dormant power within and truly experience a dimension beyond the physical. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep growing. Remember, we are much more than our physical selves. As we journey together in this exploration, let's strive to embrace the unseen, the unknown, and the limitless potential within us.